March 28th. So we got only three more days for the end of March. How fast time goes. So anyway, very, very excited to be with you. I wasn't planning on being here, but when I came across uh, uh, this information that I read through, and I'm going to provide you all the sources and so forth, it, it triggered something in my mind. And, and, and that is, why all of a sudden will Philippines, knowing how Philippines is, and Thailand be in talks about establishing a nuclear power plant? And to me, it was like, no, 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 there is more in this than is the eye. And I'm going to share my insights with you about this particular development. So, but before I do this, like always, let me check, see who is here. Uh, Home, Homan, Willie, as always, from Memphis, uh, West Memphis. So, Orwellian Purple, good to see you. Uh, 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 Pirawat. Pirawat from Thailand. Wow, good to see you here, man. Pirawat, good to see you. Uh, Kate O'Neill, good to see you. Passport Scotch, good to see you. Truth Seeker, Marcian Dorsier, uh, Amakin 10,000, and Frank Lopez, good to see you. And I see your question there. So, uh, what does. Oh, your question. It says, sorry, you have been muted by channel creator. I, I didn't I didn't mute you, man. I don't know what it is. So uh, Wong KC, good to see you. Uh, as always, Opolaji uh, Ayola, good to see you. SK Wong from London, good to see you as always. So, all right, let's get in into the topic here as to what I'm going to be covering today. Uh, for you so you'll have some sort of an understanding as to where this development is coming from but before that fyi uh, i will be having the community conversation on saturday at about 12 30 and on the same day at 2100 hours i will be having my conversation with carl za so so for uh, for that conversation we didn't decide on the topic but we're gonna just have a conversation about asia is gonna be mainly on Asia. So I'll post everything for you later on. So, so regarding today's topic, Thailand and Philippines. Yeah, they are moving forward with their plan per se. Of course, I won't believe it till I see it. But so far, they are talking and saying they're going to move forward as far as start nuclear reactor by next decade. You know, and to me was the idea of because it's going to trigger the questions. And the questions are, uh, let me share them with you here. How significant is this? Now, with the assumption that it will take off the ground, this project will take off the ground. Second thing is, uh, is this, I mean, will it work? G given the corruption, given how conditions are in Philippines, and even in Thailand to a degree, economically speaking, that's what I'm going to be focusing on. Uh, will it work? And, and the third question that we ought to ask uh, uh, is that, is this a reflection of the changing economic outlook in Asia? What do I mean by that? I know it's a loaded question. Since Asia is moving forward, when I say Asia, I am referring to China here because who's leading that charge? It's not the Philippines. It's not Thailand. It's not South Korea. It's not uh, Indonesia or Malaysia. Whatever. It's China. Now, for Indonesia and Malaysia, they are playing a role into this. Singapore, to a degree. But when it comes down to those two countries, Philippines and, and Thailand, no. At the same time, you have to think in terms of, are they seeing where this is headed? And they want to sort of get on with it, even when it comes down to generating enough electricity. Where in this case, Thailand, we need that more so than the Philippines. Philippines, because of its economic infrastructure, is crumbling. You know, more and more articles coming out now about how Marcos Jr., Bong Bong, that is, sold out his country. His true face came out. That he was playing both sides when he was running for office. And once he got into power did about face and who's going to end up suffering or who is who is already suffering are the filipino people so and we're going to get into all this data but those are questions that we have to ask 
uh, before we detail everything else. Now, let me share some headlines with you briefly here, just for you to be aware of what's going on, uh, which I already, by the way, I already posted on the on the community. Uh, that's usually sometimes when I post them there, but I figured in case you didn't see it, I'll share them with you. Uh, there were some security talks between North Korea and uh, Russia. The head of the intelligence services, the Russian one that is, his name is uh, uh, Nari Skin, uh, paid a visit to Pyongyang, North Korea, that is, for the last three days. His visit was from Monday through Wednesday, uh, and, uh, based on what I read and all that. Of course, usually it was disclosed after the fact, and that's a normal Anytime a head of an intelligence service travels, whatever, as one who used to work in Washington, we kind of know the protocol. You don't disclose it. You disclose it after the fact. But that is not the, the point on all this. The point is, why now? Between North Korea and, and, and uh, uh, Russia. Especially what just, consider what just took place in Moscow a few days ago. We are with, with the uh, attack over there. And that's back the question. Is something brewing? Are they working on something together? Now, some of you put some comments uh, that could it be like, uh, uh, be like some sort of North Korea can serve as a listening post. Yeah, there's the possibility to that. Of course, despite what they say, well, the two officials discussed the uh, strengthening cooperation between the two countries to counter the increase in espionage and plots hatched by hostile forces, end of quote. Yeah, but you're going to have to thank the big picture uh, about all this one here. The next one is this one. When I, once again, guys, please, we should uh, refrain from passing judgment. All we are doing is providing the information and we let the facts take us where they may. Now, I checked on this from different sources and got almost the confirmation of it. And this has to do with the idea that is Turkey playing both sides? And uh, because, again, Turkey has sold large quantities of weapons to Israel since October 7th. So, and Turkey sort of the uh, the items that's been sold to Israel included gunpowder, explosive substances, flammable substances, ammunition, and weapons and parts. Oh. I'm going to provide you a link where I get this from. One of them I got it from Twitter. Let me share it with you first uh, before I'll do, uh, before I'll provide you the link to where I get the article that I read in a foreign language, but are you, you're going to see it in English language. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now. So you'll have it in front of you and you can uh, check it out yourself. Here it is. I'm going to put it in the chat box for you guys. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's right there in the chat box. Oh, it says it's rejected. YouTube rejected my comments. This usually means it's a spam. That is what it says. Let me let me show you what YouTube wrote. Here is what YouTube wrote. And I'm assuming they're gonna let it show. Yeah, this is what YouTube wrote. So see it, guys, on the chat box. Anyway, I will I will post the link in the description later on. But for now, let me share the screen with you about where I get that one from my Twitter feed, then you can, uh, and you judge for yourself. So for me, to me, I always knew about Turkey. Turkey can play both sides in, in, into adding, uh, okay, let me remove the picture here first and share this one with you right there, guys. I know you can't see much, but this is from uh, uh, Jackson Hinckley. That's where I, I got the tweet from. Uh, and it says Turkey has uh, sold large quantities of weapons and so forth. So, but I will I will share the link with you to the article. So, 
All right, let's get into our analysis about uh, Thailand and Philippines. Uh, and, and as I said again, they're going to be uh, uh, unveiling in September because they want to have this by uh, uh, sort of next uh, decade or so. That's, that's where they're aiming at. And what they want to do is they want to uh, cooperate together regarding uh, the construction of what they call MSRs. MSRs are, stands for small modular uh, or modular uh, reactors. Those are small ones. I have a, a, an example of it. Uh, that is an old one that in Philippines. This is in Bataan. Of course, it was useless. Never it was abandoned and all that stuff. But but this is exactly what they wanted to do. So the countries, both countries, Thailand and Philippines, uh, uh, talked about installing, as a matter of fact, this conversation is not new, guys. You know, to my knowledge, based on the research that I did, the first time they talked was about in 2000. And by the way, I did come across this article uh, from... Uh, let me let me share the link, uh, not the link, but the location of the article from Nikkei uh, uh, Asia. That's where I got the article from, and I give credit to two writers. Uh, the first is Kusuk Kusuk Inu, and the second writer is Yuchi Sega. Those are the two the two uh, Nikkei staff writers who wrote the article about this particular topic, and that's why I'm going to be reacting to it because I do have some other information uh, beside all this. So, so like I said, the conversation started back in 2000. However, in 2011, what happened in 2011? It was a major global event pertains to nuclear. Let me see what you guys, uh, if you guys can type in that in, in the chat box. You should be familiar with it. So, oh, Japan meltdown. Oh, you know, yeah, you got it. Uh, here's the first person that, uh, yeah, right there. You got it. You got it. Uh, Muslim revert, Fukushima. You got it. Keyword 70, Fukushima. Exactly. In 2011, so the meltdown at the Japanese Fukushima uh, Daiichi plant. So, what happened? The conversation in 2000 between Thailand and Philippines, kind of all those endeavors were shelved. In other words, why are you going to be doing it? So the development of this as, uh, SMRs uh, reignited now Bangkok's interest in a nuclear power. This is where... This is the frame or the platform or the background that you need to keep in mind as to how this is coming to. But before I do this, I'm going to jump into geography. We're going to do a little bit of geography and a little bit of history about Thailand, not Philippines. I already did the Philippines before. If you guys can check out some of my older videos, the ones about Philippines, of course, and that's where. Uh, I never talked about uh, Thailand before, and this is why I wanted to do uh, this history and geography about Thailand. So, and again, all I do is brief stuff. I'll provide you the link if you guys want to dig deeper, uh, deeper into uh, and understanding uh, more about the history and so forth. So, now, regarding the history of Tha uh, geography, rather, so Thailand of the uh, uh, Indo-Chinese Peninsula in Southeast Asia, right at the heart of it. If we look at the big map of, of Asia for that matter. It is located uh, in, in the northern and eastern hemispheres of trees. First is Myanmar to the north, Laos to the north and east, Cambodia to the east, and Malaysia to the south. The Gulf of Thailand and Andaman Sea lie to the south and west of Thailand, respectively. The country shares, Thailand that is, shares its maritime borders with Vietnam in the Gulf of Thailand in southeast 
and Indonesia and India on the Andaman Sea in the southwest. This brings me to something that I just thought about, you know. What do you think will it make more sense for some sort of China and Thailand build some sort of a canal or something? Will it be a good idea to do so or not? What do you guys think? Just out of, you know, food for thoughts, that is, because it just crossed my mind and I wanted to share it with you. Now, regarding the history of Thailand, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's a long history that spans about 20,000 years because it goes all the way back to the Paleolithic hunter-gatherer from that time to the modern constitutional monarchy in Thailand. Of course, you go through the stages. You go, for example, uh, during when the bronze and rice cultivation emerged in the northeast around the 3000 BC. And that one was followed by iron and Thai, and Thai speaking people from China. That's what I found very interesting. Yeah. Then you move into the first Thai kingdom. Does anybody know what century the first Thai kingdom arose? If you know the century, type it in the chat box, please. And I'm going to take a look, see uh, if anybody gets it right. The first. First Thai kingdom, that is. What century? Let me see. In, uh, uh, Muslim revert, you're close. You're close. Uh, it's closer to 12. Not, not, not the second. Not the second. I'll give you one more try. Okay, it's 13th, 13th century, which was influenced, by the way, by Buddhism, Khmer, and Indian culture. So, And the first one, which was about 1782, is the Chakri dynasty, dynasty that was founded in 1782, which moved the capital to Bangkok and, of course, resisted the colonialism from European powers. So, and of course, fast forward to the 20th century, uh, Thailand modernized and democratized it, according to the historical record here in 20th century, century, but it faced political turmoil, coups, and a devastating, of course, Asian financial crisis. Those are some of the main, uh, and, and if, I'm going to provide you a link later on to, as a matter of fact, I'm going to put it for you right now in the chat box for those who wants to. Oh, not this one. So Sorry, this disregard this last. Uh, I got to copy the link here. Yeah, right there. This is the Thailand history, the brief, brief history. Well, the first thing you're going to have to think about the the uh, is the foundation of the kingdom of thailand yeah ayutthaya ayutthaya kingdom that was the first we laid back in 1351 then you have the uh, siamese capital of ayutthaya was ruled by thailand first king his name was ramati lodi the first it was, uh, you know, it was he who proclaimed Buddhism as the official national religion. The city of the uh, Ayut, Ayut, Ayutthaya went on to become the prosperous center of Southeast Asia, with more than one million inhabitants, comparable to Paris in size and scope. The last this reign lasted for about 400 years until 1767 when the kingdom was annexed, destroyed, and, de and demolished by whom? Does anybody know historically who demolished and annexed and destroyed the kingdom? 
1767. It's a neighboring country. Just to give you a hint, it's a neighboring country. Not the British. No, 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 no. Neighboring country. Not Japan. Not Myanmar. You're getting closer. Start with a B. Cambodia, no. It's Burma. Burmese. Burma. Camp 35, you got it. It was Burma. I didn't know that. I was. It was surprising for me when I read up through uh, the historical record to find out that it was the Burmese forces that annexed. I thought it was Cambodia. Then again, I said, no, it can't be. And it is. So. Uh, uh, then he came up, uh, Taksin, uh, Taksin the Great. Now, General Taksin is one of the biggest names in the Thai history. If you know Thai history, you should know about Taksin. Born in 1734 in the same city of Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya, yeah. He would go on to play a leading role in its defense. However, when it became clear the city was beyond saving, he managed, if only by the skin of his teeth, to escape its burning ruins. Shortly afterward, determined to fight back, he raised an army and retook Ayutthaya, expelling the Burmese. So apparently, the Burmese seems to really, really wreak havoc in, in that part of the country. King, uh, King Taksin was unrelenting in his fight for his nation's independence and even managed to expand his kingdom. However, his drive and combativeness would prove to be his un undoing. In 1782, he was deposed, declared insane, and brutally executed in the traditional way by being sealed into velvet sack to conceal the flowing of the royal blood. I did see the image. I don't want to put it for you guys because some talk is descriptive. YouTube, I guess, doesn't allow this kind of stuff. So, Of course, uh, Taksin was succeeded by General Chakri, who would adopt the name Rama, Rama I, at his coronation. And this would be the start of the Chakri dynasty on the Thai throne. Then you move into the uh, uh, into Bangkok, into Prathet, Thai, World War II, and modern-day Thailand. And I do have a picture uh, of the uh, of the young king uh, and his family in 1955. Let me share this picture with you because it's uh, one of those for the records. You know, uh, I was even it's black and white, of course. Uh, they didn't have color at that time. So here's the picture. I want you to see it. Yeah. And this is the uh, the young uh, the young king uh, Vijara Longgon and his family, 1955. And the credit to the picture goes to uh, Weekly Media Common. That's the one. So. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you as part of the history, and I will provide you the link to two other links to a longer history of Thailand if you are interested. So, All right, let's get into our conversation here about the, the uh, small model reactors or SMR. So, Well, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, just for you guys to know, Bangkok, so Thailand and, and Philippines rather, I'm sorry, are now sort of moving forward. They want to move forward with this. But of course, it's, it's easier said than done for one reason. Let me start with one. And one of you guys made a, uh, his name is Lim K, made a, an incredible comment. I read it. He said, and I quote, for Philippines, having nuclear reactor is a joke. That country couldn't afford it with its people suffering in poverty. And Thailand is not in favor of that idea as it's most suitable with its much closest neighboring countries like 
Cambodia and Laos, end of quote. Spot on. And this is what I was going to get in into talking about for the Philippines. It's going to become the issue of the cost. Where is Philippines going to get this money from? Let alone corruption that exists. Look what Marcos Jr. is doing to his country by pivoting. And pivoting is going to end up hurting Philippines economically, which means the people will suffer even further and fall into more poverty than they already are. No. And this is where that idea of the arguments regarding, oh, yeah, they are talking about moving forward with this, but no, it's not going to work. And th this conversation started, as I said, way back. And the picture, this picture here, guys, this one right here that you're looking at, you know, this is the Bataan nuclear power plant in the Philippines. That sat idle uh, since the plant was put into operations back in 1986. This is when those operations were a bad neck uh, to rulers for this picture here. So, so the idea of uh, Thailand and Philippines going to move forward with this, no, I am not going to buy that argument personally. As an analyst, I'm going to have to think in terms of First of all, the cost. Second, how is that going to change the geopolitical landscape in the region? And third is because would you allow the U.S. to build that? Because that's what the Philippines is asking for. And I'm going to disclose to you which American company is already planning that should this move forward, we will be happy to build it. What about reaching out to China, who will have a much better, better record for all that? And makes you just wonder. This is why I said there is more into this that meet the eye. So the SMRs, of course, generate less power than conventional reactors. Just to know, for those who understand uh, the hydro stuff and, and uh, nuclear fusion and so on, uh, it's not my area. All I know is that, uh, based on my reading, that the SMRs, is not as as powerful as the conventional reactor like what it was in Daiichi uh, uh, in, in Japan and so forth. But they are considered safer. That is one of the things. So the US, UK, and China are among countries now racing to develop them. Washington said in November 2022, here is the key, that it will provide technological support for the SMRs to Thailand government. At that time, because the government at that time was led by the Prime Minister Prayut Chang Ocha back then. Now they got the new Prime Minister, and this is his picture. Let me share a picture with you. This is the new Thai Prime Minister. His name is Sareta uh, Thabisin. He's the Thailand current Prime Minister. And he's the one who's saying and discussing the possibility of rolling out nuclear power with the U.S. Why is this? Do you guys know why? It's because during the visit of Gina, Gina Redondo, Redondo she is the U.S. Commerce Secretary. When she went to China, she made two stops, one in Philippines and one in Thailand. This was discussed in Thailand. And right there, first of all, why will they, even if they want to go forward with this, you know, is this means China doesn't have a good uh, record when it comes down to building nuclear power plants? Makes you just wonder. So, And this conversation between Surat, uh, the prime minister of Thailand, the current one, and the, the commerce secretary, Gina Raimondo, it was when they met on March 14 this year. Yeah, this year. March 14. We're talking about two weeks ago. And Sarada, or Sarada, yeah, Sarada said that Thailand will research the safety of SMRs and solicit public input. That tells me nothing is concrete yet. That's why I don't see this moving forward because Philippines can afford it and Thailand is concerned about the safety of this. And the record for the disasters that could happen with something like this one. So then you're going to have to think about how Asian countries, especially neighboring countries, are going to react to that. 
you know, would you want to have a nuclear power plant in your backyard? Some will say, I'm okay with it. Others will say, no, I don't think so. But there is a reason also uh, why Thailand will have to move into the, this direction. And as I said earlier in the question, is this a reflection of the economic outlook in that part of the world, Asia as a whole? Because Asia is now the engine of the global economy. It's not the US, it's not the EU. We all know this. It's a fact. The wealth has already shifted from the West to the East. The center of gravity, economically uh, speaking, is China. This is why you see in ASEAN moving in certain directions. This is why you see in BRICS is moving in certain directions. Even though you and I know there are certain players inside both uh, economic blocks that they, they're going to need to rethink their possessions within this, the, those uh, two economic blocks. But the reason why Thailand is doing this is because Thailand is running sort of short. It's going to... Its resources on natural gas are being exhausted. This is one of the reasons why they go, going into this. And with this comes the need for the increase in electricity demands. I went to Bangkok a few years ago. I spent about a, a short trip. It was about a week and a half to two weeks max. That's about it. Uh, I was at the embassy over there. But I used to go out inside, outside Bangkok, and, you know, just walk around and see and it's crowded and vibrant city and so forth. Uh, but at the same time, I was thinking about, well, I wonder where, where Bangkok is going to be a decade from now as far as the growth of it. And with that growth comes the demand for uh, uh, energy, electricity, and so forth. This is one of them. And this is why the electricity demand is going to grow in line with assumption with the economy. So, And this is why... There is another element, by the way, which I didn't forget because I read it elsewhere, that Thailand now subscribe and pledge to end carbon neutral or be carbon neutral by 2050. Same thing India said. But you and I know I ain't going to happen. Because in the case of India, they can't do without a coal. And same thing with Thailand. And this is why, even though it's the idea, it's great and so forth. Yeah, I hope it works out. But who's going to pay for it? Nothing is free, especially on a project like this. And second, what are you going to go hire? A U.S. firm that's going to charge you 10 times the price what you could ask, for example, China. This is Thailand. If we go on the Philippine side, Philippines faces even more daunting challenges for it to even operate something like this. And guess what? Philippines wants to have this ready by 2030. It's laughable. And it's because concerning also, if the haste into building something like this, the safety is going to be compromised. So already, here is the kicker to all this which I found very, I found very troubling. Here is the kicker to all this. Manila and Washington have already signed an agreement on a civilian nuclear power in November of last year. So that means there's already a conversation. And could it be this also during the time of when Marcos Bonbon came to power? And this will allow for the transfer of nuclear material equipment and information between the two countries. We're basically we're not going to share uh, some sort of uh, secretive technology with them anyway. Because Philippines is serves the U.S. interest, not the other way around. So, And think about all this, guys. Think about this. The SMR, okay, the SMRs are considered the leading candidate for adoption by the Philippines. This is what the U.S. firm New Scale Power Plants, it plans to invest about $7.5 billion between now and 2031 to build the reactors in, in the Philippines. I just don't see, I just don't see 
the rationale and the reality for how this could could uh, because Philippines needs more than just building a nuclear power plant it needs to have the infrastructure for this need to have the technology to maintain the safety of all this yeah the us can do it for the philippines charging them arms and legs and the philippines can afford that which means what we're going to ask them for other things besides money political pressure and you all know what i'm referring to here because you have to think the big picture in case of a conflict in the region philippines will be used as a base a launching pad for the us this is what i see the problem uh and like i mentioned earlier regarding this uh regarding this uh nuclear power, this plant here which is a very very uh, a minimum small one uh this one because philippine attempted they tried to build something like this uh, in in Luzon under the former president Ferdinand Marcos Sr. But of course, those plans to open the plan were abandoned. Why? Because of 1990, 1986. What happened in 1986 in the Philippines, guys? Does anybody know or remember or if you read in the history uh, as to what happened back then? If you know if you can type that in, we'll greatly appreciate it. 1986, what happened in the Philippines? Uh, the revolt, it was not. Uh, okay, you, you're, you're close. Muslim revert, you are close. It was the revolution. It was the. It was what happened in 1986. Was the pro democracy, so called the pro democracy movement, which led to the departure of, of course, Marcos, and of course the Chernobyl nuclear disaster of that year. Also, those are the key two events. And as we all know, of course, the son of uh, Marcos uh, Ferdinand Marcos uh, Senior. His son, the current president, Marcos Jr., starting now the nuclear power plant. It's not about uh, the Filipino people. It's about the legacy of his father, which is problematic. Because Philippines cannot afford that. That's one. Then you have a third element. And third element has to do with another country altogether is indonesia now indonesia one of the largest in the region with about over 270 million people also has a plan to install some sort of nuclear uh, plan with the capacity between 1000 to 2000 megawatt by 2030 so it goes parallel to all this so why it's because, like in India, like in, 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 in Thailand to a degree, coal currently accounts for about 60% in Indonesia. This is why they're thinking about doing this. And makes you wonder, is this why Philippines and Thailand wanted to embark on this? Because Indonesia is also doing it. So. Of course, we can't deny the concerns over safety. That is, that is, a, let me remove this picture. Uh, that is a, a foregone conclusion. Because the safety remains high. As you all know, what happened uh, uh, in 2023, and this is according to the article that I uh, uh, stated to you from the Nikkei uh, Asia. What happened in March 2023? A cylinder containing radioactive uh, 137 was discovered to be missing at a coal plant in Thailand. Of course, that cylinder was discovered days later, but the incident, according to the article, and I couldn't agree more, exposed the problem of the lack of oversight. 
Because if you get a hold of a, a radioactive material, well, well, what you can do with it is very detrimental. So just imagine if a group get a hold of that. You know. And there is another, the big elephant in the room. And this one has to do with the neighboring country of Myanmar. Why is this important? Myanmar's military government is now deepening. Yeah, you heard it. Deepening its nuclear cooperation with Russia. So that is very, very important to understand the ramification of something like now ramification in the sense of, yes, you think about it from a technological aspect of it. But a country like Myanmar, uh, Myanmar is will be, in my opinion, no different than the Philippines as far as the infrastructure, you know. And Myanmar can Myanmar afford uh, something like this. I don't know how the Russians are going to do it. The cooperation is going to work out between the two. That remains to be seen. And I don't have an answer for that one at this point. So, suffice it to say that for both countries, the Philippines and Thailand, it's, it's nicer to be talking about nuclear power plants technology. It's like what France is doing. France is uh, powering its country through nuclear power plants. The only challenges now for France is that where does it get its uranium to fuel those power plants? Does anybody know? Can you type in in the chat box, where does France get its uranium uh, from uh, to fuel its uh, uh, nuclear power plants? Because that's how France generates uh, its electricity. So, and, and I see the same challenge that the Philippines and Thailand is going to be facing uh, from Niger. Not anymore. You're right. Absolutely correct. Matt Becky, you're absolutely correct. Niger, it's done. It's over for for France. And uh, uh, Russia, not, not as much. No, and especially now with the tensions and all that. Uh, so Russia is not as much. What I found very interesting about France that I need you to know. France now, uh, not France, I'm sorry. UK now just declared that it will no longer uh, import uh, gas from uh, Russia. <laughs> You know why I'm laughing? I'm laughing because Russia is going to, uh, UK is going to be buying gas from France. And guess where that company in France is getting gas from? From Russia. So it's just very ridiculous. So, so yeah. Uh, so this is where I see the challenge for Thailand and Philippines. Uh, where they're going to get the uranium from and the cost of it. This is why there are some challenges lies ahead. Uh, the US uh, is pushing for this because we wanted to uh, uh, sink our claws into both societies, the Philippines and the, or both countries, rather, the Philippines and Thailand. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to bode for those two countries. But the one thing I am certain of is the idea of where the economic outlook for Asia is headed and the possibility that Philippines and, and, and Thailand could be thinking in these terms. But how can you? Assume something like this when Marcos Jr. is dragging his country in a different direction altogether. You know, Thailand, uh, I don't live in Thailand. I don't know a lot, but I do know that economically they are also in in in, uh, in, in a position of they're going to need some sort of upgrade of their economic infrastructure and so forth. Philippines is even more than uh, than Thailand. And this is where I see those challenges that lies ahead for this country. Uh, I, I, I just don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. Oh, Cam, 35. Oh, you said YouTube censored you for typing the word. Oh, Niger. Wow. That's ridiculous. Yeah, come on, YouTube. Come on. We're beyond that. Let people just express their opinions. I mean, I would appreciate it. YouTube, if you are listening, I would greatly appreciate it if you can let people express their opinions. So, so this is when I see the, the, the only question that I, now I am left to wonder about is what will be the role now of Philippines inside ASEAN? Not as much as Thailand, but for Philippines. Because I compare both, I compare literally Philippines inside ASEAN to India inside BRICS. That's usually how I see it. 
and and it's gonna be very very uh, uh it's already i talked to some people from philippines uh, conditions are getting a little bit worse economically speaking and 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 the uh but of course i can understand why marcos jr will do what even he is told to do it's because the assets of the marcos family are in the united states including gold so and that is a and to my knowledge that philippines has some natural resources not to the extent of some other countries but they do have at least some so and it makes me just wonder makes me wonder uh, when when marcos jr came to power was he already preconceived notion for him that I'm going to put the welfare of my family before my country? You know, I was really hoping, and I mean it, I was hoping for the guy, Marcos Jr., that is to lead Philippines at least on a path of prosperity. It's not going to become prosper next year or two years or three, but at least put the country on that path. And when he made that trip to China, because I was following those developments, I said, well, that's a good sign. But I also left that question mark. Will he be pressured because of the history? And turns out to be right. Is the history of the family. For what Ferdinand Marcos, uh, uh, even, even when I was way back, I do remember the years of uh, Corazon Aquino. And, and when Ferdinand Marcos came to power, and the lavish lifestyle the family was living. I was aware of some of that. And you said, well, okay, maybe that's the old generation or whatever. Now you got the young, young generations that understand a little bit better. What turns out to be uh, Bong Bong did not understand. So it turns out that he put the welfare of his uh, uh, family first before the, uh, the welfare of the Filipino people. And to me, if you are to say in a true democracy, uh, people should have uh, 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 the ability to remove someone from power if he or she is not doing the work accordingly. That's the way I, 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 I see it. So, By the way, guys, I forgot to share some few uh, pictures with you from the history of Thailand. This, if you go to the link, this is when the Buddhism was adopted and so forth. The link that I posted for you, and I will post it in the in the description. Uh, you're gonna see some of those images. Uh, it's a reflection of the Thailand history, which is a rich, rich history, uh, at least from what I observed when I was there. Uh, very interesting, wonderful people, very wonderful. So maybe they treated me nicely, no issues there whatsoever. So this is during uh, demonstrations uh, that took place back then. So. I always get wary when I see the word we want democracy. So, so. this is uh all right, guys. I'm gonna take some questions here, and if uh we'll greatly appreciate your support as always. Here is the one for PayPal. Should you decide to support the channel? Speaking of that, I'd like to give a shout out to TC Kwan, you know, bought me on both platforms. Uh, for uh, for the the channel and the Asia trip. So thank you so much for your support. I also want to give a shout out to uh, John uh, and Julia Jones. Thank you so much for buying me 10 cups of coffee. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Of course, Drag88, uh, uh, there are so many of you, so many of you. Juj Liang, uh, uh, Boone, uh, all of you, all of you guys. Uh, all I'm seeing, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for your continued support. It means a lot to me. Uh, and I want you to know this. So. All right, guys, let me answer some questions from you here. Uh, just to remind you, rem remember to join me on Saturday at 12.30 for the community conversation. And yeah, I know I don't talk geopolitics on the community conversation. And I did ask your vote, and some of you wants to talk about UFO. I have some information. Some of you said, well, that's a silly topic. Hey, that's what people wants to talk, the, the, the members in the community or the uh, community members wants to talk about. So uh, I put thanks for vote, majority rule. To me, that's what democracy means. You know, I can pick a topic. 
but I want you to be part of the conversation. It's not just me. I want you to be part of it. You know, the selection of topics, uh, I can just open it for questions. Of course, I'm not going to be addressing geopolitics, but that's what they want. Maybe this time we'll do that one. And next time, if any of you has any topic you would like uh, the community uh, to talk about during, let me know. I'll put it to vote and we'll vote for it. And the majority will rule on that. That's the way I see it. The way I see it. So, And of course, remember also to join me on Saturday at 2100 hours for my conversation with Carl Za at, at that time. So, All right. Let me see uh, some questions from you. Uh, Oh, Bobby Law, you wrote, I miss Duterte. He seems like a good leader. Yeah, he was he was tough, you know, and I know we we were criti we criticized him right away as soon as he started clamping on drug dealers. And to me, it was like, no, he's doing the right thing. You don't negotiate with something like that. Except that we're trying to push him too far to antagonize China. And he said, no, I won't do that. So I see your point. I see your point. But on the other hand, the Filipino people voted for Marcos Jr. They are living with the consequences. The same like in every other country. Same for us here. Same in Canada, Germany, France. Sunak wasn't elected, by the way. He was just appointed. He's not even legitimately a prime minister. Uh, but you got the idea. You got the idea. This is where I see. Uh, all right, let me see. If you will be kind, just put Q so I know it's question and I will answer it for you. Uh, Chanel, you put, Doctor, would you please expose Big Pharma for the criminal? They are. Oh, yes, they are. Uh, you won't want me to do it here on uh, on YouTube. They'll, 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 they'll shut it down. I mean, they are, sens they are silencing Dr. Burke. <laughs> the guy with over 10 million viewers because he talks. But I can do it on the other platform, and I'd be happy to do that. Actually, I am planning on doing something on the other platform regarding immigration that you guys need to know what's going on here in America and immigration. And I can do the big pharma as well. And I do have a lot to say about that one. So I will consider doing it. Because if I do one here on this platform, it's going to be the soft version. And I will be limited in what I can say. All right. Uh, timeline, Dunkley. If people start leaving certain countries and going to different countries, will the government try to stop them? No, it shouldn't because why would they stop them? Yeah, they could if they start running to by uh, blocking their, their uh, or invalidating their passports or something like that. But that would be tyranny. Right in the U.S., people are already leaving. I am considering my options without getting into details on this. Uh, it's because of what I see coming. And because by that time, it, it will be too late for anybody to start making plans. It'll be too late. Yeah, some country is good. But if we are to say we live in a democracy, well, I can go anywhere I want. So, so I can see some countries doing that one. All right, let me see. Uh, I saw. Are oh, you right, Army with Harmony? Yeah, I am here. I see what's going on in the border. I live in a state that deals with this on a daily basis. And what they are not disclosing is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's why I'm going to. Let me just share one with you just for you guys to know. Did you know that now the immigrants will be given now the right to invite, sponsor anybody they want? Those are the illegals will be able to sponsor anybody they want. And once those people get here, they will be afforded a stipend from the government paid by the U.S. tax dollars. I got a problem with that. I have nothing against immigrants. I am an immigrant myself. We're all of us here in this country. Who is American here? We all came from somewhere to those who argue. But at the same time, there is something called legal pathway for immigration. 
That's the way I see it. Whether some of us born here or not, our ancestors came from somewhere, the legal way. So, so I will be addressing this kind of stuff uh, uh, on, on the other uh, platform. So. All right, let me see another question uh, here. Uh, I'm going to scroll all the way up. A question, Dr. O, can you do the community program earlier like at this time? Well, it will be at this time. It will be at this time. Uh, the, the 9 o'clock, the 9 p.m., that's my conversation with Carl Za. No, no, I do it around this time. So you are in the EU. Yeah, I usually do it at uh, 12.15. That's usually my regular time. All right, let me see one more question, guys, and I will sign off here. And uh, okay, uh, we did that. Uh, we did that question. Athin Wu, good to see you as always. Good to see you, Franny. Yeah, uh, Kevin, I agree with you. I agree with you. 100%. 100%. So. All right, guys. I hope you find this very informative. I know it's a topic that uh, uh, I wasn't anticipating. But again, I wanted to... Uh, to me, I don't, I don't follow trends. You all know this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm myself. I don't follow trends. You know, to me... All right, you'd rather be a leader than a follower. Yeah, you, you can follow sometimes, but when it comes down to this, I have to think in terms of the implication long terms. So the information that I share with you is the one that, that can benefit you a year from today, two, three, four, down the road. I don't want to tell you the uh, or share the information that is just, oh, some major event happened today and it ends tomorrow because it's been resolved. That is the reason why I do certain topics. And I know they are not too popular with many, but again, I am not about that. I am about the importance of the information. So, so I hope you find this very informative. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time. As always, remember, geopolitics, impacted daily life, in more ways than one. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.